live from Midtown Manhattan, it's theCUBE. Covering Big Data New York City 2017. Brought to you by SiliconANGLE Media and its ecosystem sponsors. Okay, welcome back everyone. Live here in New York City, it's theCUBE special presentation of Big Data NYC. This is our fifth year doing our own event here in New York City, our eighth year covering the Hadoop world ecosystem from the beginning through eight years. It's had a lot of evolutions, Hadoop world, Strata conference, Strata Hadoop, now it's called Strata Data, happening right around the corner. We run our own event here in Manhattan, talking to thought leaders and the experts, CEOs, entrepreneurs, getting the data for you, sharing that with you. I'm John Furrier, the co-host of theCUBE, with my co-host here, Jim Kabilis, who's the analyst, lead analyst at Wikibon on Big Data, and Chuck Yarbrough, who's the vice president of Pentaho Solutions, part of Hitachi's new Ventara, a new company created, just announced last week, of Hitachi and a variety of their portfolio technologies into a new company out to bring in uh, a lot of those integrated solutions. Chuck, great to see you again, CUBE alumni. Uh, we, we chatted multiple times at Pentaho World going back 2015. Always, always great to be <laughs> at the CUBE. So. What a couple of years it's been. Yeah. Um, Give us a quickly, the hard news is pretty awesome. You guys have a variety of things at Pentaho, you know, with Hitachi, that happened. Now the market's evolving. What's this new entity, this new company? Yeah, you guys so, are bringing so the big news, Hitachi Ventara. So what that is, uh, two years ago, Hitachi Data Systems acquired Pentaho. And, uh, and so fast forward two years, and a new company gets created from Hitachi Data Systems Pentaho, and a third uh, organization at, at Hitachi called the Insight Group, so Hitachi Insight Group. Those three groups come together to form Hitachi Ventara, and... What's the motivation behind that? Obviously, I mean, I can almost connect the dots, but I want to hear your perspective, because it really is about pulling things together. The trend this year at the show is, uh, as Jim calls it, hybrid data, hybrid, hybrid in integrated data, Things seem to be coming together. Is that part of the purpose? What's the reason behind pulling this together? Yeah, I, I think it's, it, there, there's a lot of reasons. One of them is what we're seeing, not just in our own business, but in, in our customers' business, and that is digital transformation, right? This, this need to evolve. And, um, and so Hitachi Ventar is all about data and analytics. And um, a, a big focus of what we do is what Pentaho has been doing for years, mm -hmm. which is driving in all kinds of data, big data, all data. I think we're getting on the a cusp of closing out the big data term, but uh, you know, it's all data, right? It's data um, everywhere, every application. And, and applying analytics across the board. And, and uh, one of the big initiatives, part of why Pentaho was originally acquired, um, we were actually, uh, Hitachi Data Systems was a customer of Pentaho when we got acquired, so we, we knew each other pretty well. Um, and part of the reason for that acquisition was to drive analytics in and around Internet of Things, the mm -hmm. IoT space, um, which is something that Hitachi, being a very large uh, IT and operational technology, OT company, uh, probably does as well as anybody, if not better. So, so going back a couple of years, I'm just looking at my notes here from our, our video index. Uh, you you and I, you visited the Cube in 2015, but really the concepts have evolved significantly. I want to just highlight a few of them. Um, what data warehouse optimization is about? We talked about that data refinery concept. Yeah. Uh, the 360 view uh, as applied to big data. Again, that was foundational concepts that all are in play right now. Absolutely. What is the update in those years? Because the refinery, everyone talks about data refinery, you know, the oil. They use the oil example, but I mean, come on. I mean, data is everywhere. It's, it is the most important. You can use it multiple times, unlike oil. Uh, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> as so, you were pointing out. So, interesting you bring that up. So, uh, to me, data refinery uh, in a digital transformation or really in an IOT world where lots of data is, is streaming through. In fact, uh, yesterday I read something by IDC that 95% uh, uh, of all data in the future and, and the data growth is dramatic, it's 10x what it is today uh, in, in just a few years, 95% uh, of the, that growth of data is IOT related. Um, the question is, you know, how are you using most of that, right? Mm -hmm. and, and what are you going to do with it? So that data is streaming through, there's a lot happening, we can do things at the edge, right? We can apply analytics and filtering and do things, but ultimately, that data is going to land somewhere, and that's where that refinery 
think of it as the yeah. big data center refinery, yeah. right? Where I'm going to take that large amount of data and do the things that, that yeah. Jim does, you know, and apply machine learning and, and deep al yeah. algorithms to, uh, to really like predict to your thoughts on the IoT. Jim and I were arguing, not arguing, discussing <laughs> uh, with others on theCUBE about we the, were role, bickering. <laughs> the role of the edge, because this, obviously the refinery, the data can come back, depending on what kind of data there is, or you push compute to the edge, kind of known concepts, people have been discussing that. But the issue has been, how do you view the edge? I'd love to get your uh, reaction to that question, because a lot of people are saying, you have to think of IoT as a completely different category than just cloud, than just data center, because the way some people are looking at IoT, I know it can be semantics, whether it's industrial or just straight internet of things, device or person, but it's a different animal when it comes to like what you call it and how it gets put into a bucket. I mean, most people put a lot of things in the IT bucket, but yeah. some are saying IT edge should be a completely different category of how you look at those problems. Your thoughts on on how that so IoT conversation should shape. The, the question I always ask when I'm talking to somebody about the edge is, well, what do you mean? <laughs> right, <laughs> because it, it is something that can be uh, defined a little bit differently. But in an industrial IoT context, I think you know we we look at it as one. You you have to know what those things are. You have to really understand them. Um, and uh, and and part of understanding those things is having a digital representation of what those things are. Mm -hmm. Uh, one a of the things twin, that, that a digital twin, right? Yeah. Or asset avatar, yes. as uh, we call it at Hitachi. Oh, I like that. So, so this idea asset of avatar, right? really right. managing, you know, those assets, understanding what they are, and then being able to know what the current state, what the previous state, things are like that are, um, mm. and then that refinery we just talked about is sort of where that information goes to, so you can do other kinds of analytics, right? But when you're talking about the edge, typically what we're seeing is the kinds of um, analytics that might happen at the edge are probably more around filtering. You know, it's, it's, it's not quite as complex of analytics. That's what we're seeing today. Now, the future, I don't know. Sort of you tiered know. analytics from the edge on in with the <coughs> more minimal, I mean, not minimal, that's the wrong term. With the more narrowly scoped inference, like predictions and so forth being handled at the edge, with larger, more complex models being, uh, you know, like deep learning, whatever, being processed in the cloud? Is that yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly okay. the, the, the way that, that I see it. Now, the other thing about the edge, depends on who you're talking to, again, <coughs> but is an e you know, what is an edge device? Or, 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 or the, the gateways, or the, the compute, right? So, so yeah. part of IoT is, uh, in my mind, it's it's not cloud, it's not on-prem, or it's not, I mean, it's it's a little bit of everything, right? It depends on the use case and what you're operating. We have a customer who does trains as a service in in uh, England, okay, in, in Europe. And um, so they don't sell the trains anymore. They actually manufacture trains and they sell the service of getting a passenger from here to there. So. But for them, edge is everything that happens on those trains. And tracking as a digital representation, the train, and then being able to drill down deeper and deeper. And you know, one of the things that, uh, that, that, that I understand is one of the major delays for, for train service is doors opening and closing or being delayed. So maybe that comes down to a small part and the vibration of it and tracking that, right? So you've got to be able to track that appropriately. Now on a train, you might have a lot of extra space, so you could put compute devices that have a lot of power. Yeah. In what's, a, what's interesting, you said that edge in this context is everything that happens on that train. In other words, it sounds like all the real world outcomes that are enabled, perhaps optimized, by embedding of the analytics in those physical devices or in that entire, you know, uh, vehicle, that is essentially uh, your discussion. Your, one way that you're describing the edge, which is not a single device, but it's a complete assembly of devices that play together amongst themselves and in the, with the, uh, services in the cloud. Is that? Yeah, yeah. The large, so that's, that's kind of why, of framework you're why I said there? I usually ask, what do we mean yeah, by edge? Yeah. But um, but yeah, if you've got lot, you know, you got millions, thousands, whatever yeah. devices yeah. out there, feeding sensors, whatever, feeding this data, yeah. uh, <coughs> collecting, processing, yeah. you know, and there's some some level of 
edge computing, um, gateways, processes that are going to happen. Yeah. To well, my question for you, I'd like to get your thoughts, because we, again, we're having, a, um, we love the hype of IoT, we think it's completely legit and it's going to be continue to be hyped, because it's obvious what, yeah. what you see with IoT, yeah. it's anything on the edge. But a lot of customers that we talk to are like, look, I got a lot going on, I got application development, I got yeah. to break out my security, I got to build that up, I got data governance issues, and now you throw an IoT over the top, <laughs> I'm like, I got, I'm choking in, yeah. in projects. So they, they come down to kind of a selection uh, criteria. How, how do they define a working IoT project? And the trend that we're seeing <coughs> is that it has to do with their industrial equipment or something related to their business. We call it industrial IoT because if they have something in their business, like say trains, is a critical part yeah. of what they do. Yeah. That's easy to say, let's justify this. Everything else then tends to go on the back burner if they don't have clear visibility of what they're instrumenting. That's kind of what we're hearing. Do you agree with that? Do you see um, a pattern as well as what customers are doing by saying, I'm going to bring this project in and we're going to connect our IoT, whatever yeah, it is? Yeah, no, uh, that's exactly what I see. Um, industrial Internet of Things is where, where I see the biggest value today. Um, when you have trains or mining equipment or you know whatever, whatever your business you know, manufacturing <laughs> line, right? Yeah. And being able to uh, fine tune those those lines to uh, either predict failures or maybe improve quality. Mm -hmm. um, those are those are impactful, and they can be done right now today. And that's what we're seeing is kind of the 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 big the big emerging thing. IoT is interesting to talk about. The reality is it's really digital transformation that we're seeing. Companies transforming into new business models, doing things significantly different to grow into the future. Um, and, and IoT is an enabler of that. So you're not going to see yeah. IoT everywhere today, but I, I, the low hanging fruit is where it connects to the real business. Yeah, but it's going to go across all verticals, right? So no what, doubt. What solutions does Pentao uh, have for digital twins or managing digital twins? You know, the objects, the data itself, within an IoT context. Is this something that you're engaged in already? So, so within the um, Hitachi, Ventara. Okay, the larger company. Bigger, yeah. bigger company. Uh, we have. We have what we call our Lumata IoT platform. Mm. And in that, there is this um, uh, asset avatar technology yes. Yes. That, that does exactly what you're describing. Now, okay. um, I'm going to throw a quick plug out, if you don't mind, in Tahoe World in, in a couple of, uh, about a month. The Cube will be there. Uh, yeah. The Cube will be there, and we're yeah. excited to have the Cube. Uh, and we're going we're gonna, to, uh, give you complete information about that cool. asset avatar. Okay. Uh, with all yes. the right people. Yeah, it's there's, there's a movie in there somewhere, I could feel it, <laughs> Avatar 2. Um, there's a lot of great representations of data. I want to get your thoughts on, on how the new firm is going to solve customer problems. Because now as the customers see this new entity from you guys, Pentaho's been doing real well. We covered the acquisition, and you were kind of left alone. Pentaho was I mean, integrating in, but it wasn't yeah. like a radical, it's true. Radical shift. Yep. Now there's some movement. What does it mean to customers? What's the story to the customer? You know, I, I think it's great news for the customer because uh, Pentaho's always been very customer focused. Um, but when you look at Hitachi Ventara, the, the wealth of technology and expertise, everything from uh, all of the, the great uh, <coughs> IT oriented stuff that Hitachi Data Systems has done and been well known for in the past, <coughs> still exists. Uh, but this broader focus of, of taking data and processing it in, in, a, in a variety of ways to, to solve real business problems, uh, all the way to uh, orchestrating machine learning and, and applying algorithms, and then with the Hitachi, um, so, so, Hitachi. so what specifically in Hitachi is coming into this? Because again, this is again a, a focused solution company now with data. Yeah. So Hitachi data centers. I yeah. Mean data so Hitachi systems. Data, data systems, systems is think of it as the the infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, company. Yeah. Um, Hitachi Insight was the uh, really focused largely on the IoT uh, platform development mm -hmm. with some uh, Pentaho assets and then the Pentaho business. But but here's the thing about Hitachi. Uh, very large, large Huge. company. Yeah, Builds massive. everything, right? Mining equipment and, and all kinds of stuff. So nobody understands how all those things fit together better, I, I believe, than, yeah. than Hitachi. Um, 
So, but, but some of the things that we have at that, at that organization is this idea of the Hitachi Labs and data scientists that are really doing interesting things. Jim, you'll, you'd love to, to get more embedded yes. into what some I'm of those things it. are. Um, and, and making that available to customers is, uh, is a, a huge opportunity for customers to now be able to embrace a lot of the technologies we've been talking about. I, I said last year, that this year was going to be the year of machine learning, and if you look through the expo hall, that's what everybody's okay. talking about, right? Yeah. It's AI or machine learning. Or um, I'm wondering if you're if you're commercializing R and D that's coming straight out of Hitachi Labs already, or whether the Ventara combination will enable that. In other words, bringing more innovation straight out of the labs into into, co into commercial arenas. So uh, so you, that's a play. that's something that we are absolutely trying to to do. Yeah. Right, because there's there's great things that these lab organizations and at Hitachi, they're big labs. Oh yeah, I mean they're le they're really legit. I kind of joke about that, um, and the kinds of stuff that they're able to bring about. Now Pentaho is part of the engine to help actually uh, commercialize right. some of those things. So Chuck, it's great to have there. you on. We're looking forward to Pentaho World. Um, give you the final word here in the segment. Obviously, the big data world's evolved. Take your your Pentaho hat off and, and put your you know, industry guru hat on. What's happening? I mean, what's, I mean, this AI wash, that's pretty obvious. Mm -hmm. um, not a lot of blockchain discussion, which is going to completely open up some things we yep. see in the decentralized application market, which is going to complement the distributed nature of how we see uh, data analytics flowing, and certainly the immutability of it's interesting, but that's kind of down the road. But, but here, you're starting to see the, the, the swim lanes in the industry. You've seen the people who've been successful and the ones who have fallen by the wayside. Yep. But now the customers, they want real solutions. They don't want more hype. It's not, they don't want another eighth year of hype, they want, okay, let's get into the real meat and potatoes of data impact to my organization, called yeah. digital transformation. What's, what's, what's happening, what is going on in the landscape? So, you know, I, I mentioned it before, and it's, to me, it's digital transformation, which is a big, you know, like, like huge thing. Um, but, but that's what companies are interested in, that's what they're beginning to think. If they're not thinking about those things, they're falling behind. Five or six, seven years ago, we talked about the same exact thing with big data. It's like, hey, big data is really, you know, it's a big opportunity, and they're like, well, I don't know. Those that didn't adopt it yeah. aren't necessarily in a position now to transform digitally and to do some of the things that they're going to need to evolve into new business opportunities. And the big data examples of winners are the ones who actually made it valuable whether it's insight that converted to a new customer or yep. changed an outcome in a, in a positive way, yep. they go, that wouldn't have been possible without data. That's right. So the proof points kind of hit the, hit the That's table. Right. That's right, the other thing is, you know, who's going to win, who's going to lose. I think people that are uh, implementing technology for technology's sake are going to lose. Mm -hmm. People that are focused on the outcomes are going to win. Yeah. That's that's what it is, right? Technology enables all that, but you've really got to be focused on. I want to get your quick one more quick thing. Well, before we go, I know we got we're tight on time, but I want to get your thoughts. Obviously, the op open ecosystem of open source is going to a whole nother level. The projections are code will be shipping at an exponential rate. It's been going to be on a lot of onboarding of new stuff. So open obviously works. Community models work. Partnering is critical. So we're seeing that good partnerships, not fake deals or you know, optical mm -hmm. deals or Barney deals, whatever you want to call it. Barney. Like real partnerships. <laughs> You're starting to see technology partnerships. What's your view on that? How is the new Aventara going to go forward? You're going to continue to do partnerships and what's the strategy? Yeah, I think um, the the opportunity with Vanta uh, Hitachi Vantara is um, we have a breadth that can touch many different aspects. So as Pentaho, we had great partnerships very meaningful, but it always comes down to what are we doing for the customer? How are we changing things for customers? So uh, I'm not a believer in those Barney kind of relationships. <laughs> those are nice, but yeah. you know, let's talk about what we're doing for customers. Yeah, real proof points. Yep, and that's that's. And you guys will continue to partner. We will to continue to do that. Okay, great. Absolutely. Chuck, thanks so much. Cube coverage uh, live in New York City in Manhattan. This is the Cube with big data. NYC, our fifth year doing our own event in conjunction with Strata Data. Now that's the new name of the show. Oh, Strata was Strata Hadoop, Hadoop World before that, but we're still theCUBE covering eight years of the action here. We'll be back with more after this short break. Mm -hmm.